All right, guys. Um, welcome, by the way. Go Pack Go. Green Bay Packers with the victory, 38-20. to 20. Unbelievable stuff. Um, what I want to do today is um, sort of a call-in show. We're going to do Packernet After Dark for those on the podcast. Don't worry, it's just Packernet After Dark. But um, I've got a different streaming software here that I'm trying because the other one is just driving me nuts and it's not working. And so um, for those of you that want to check it out, hopefully this is uh, working and everybody can see everything. Um, I don't know if the audio is 100% going to come through. We're going to find out very soon here. If it isn't, please drop a comment and let me know if the audio is not working. All right? Do me that favor. Otherwise, if you want to call in, feel free to do so. 608-501-0718 is the number to call. We'll abide by the new callers. Go directly to the front of the line. At least I think so. We're not going to do that one because it's got to be after the game today. So just game time callers we're going with. Um, let's give this a shot. Let's go ahead and do it. I think we have enough people here right now to make sure. Again, let me know if you cannot hear this. Oof. This is Justin uh, from Amory. Hi, new caller, Justin. Yes. I don't want to get too excited because, you know, it's just the Bears. But damn. <laughs> The first half wasn't looking great, and they came back out and did something they haven't done in years and stepped on a throat. I like it. Yeah, a little bit of a throat there. Hopefully uh, Jones is doing good. I'm I'm excited. I just, I'm excited. Not much to say. Go back, go. <laughs> I, th I think you just about said it all. 38 to 20. You know, we, we talked about this. I was on with uh, Clayton and the boys, and there was a question in the comments about, you know, should we still be tempering expectations? I mean, look, to some degree, of course. Of course, stuff happens. Weird stuff happens. This doesn't automatically mean anything. However, there's no reason to still sit back and think that, well, we're probably not a playoff team, ho-hum, this, that, or the other. 38 points, I don't care how bad the Bears are. I don't care about anything else. 38 points is hard to do. Especially week one. The, the old adage that, um, you know, week one is all about defense. That was true for almost every single team except maybe the Packers and 49ers as far as I've seen. I know the Dallas game is on right now. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Although I think my son just told me nobody has scored aside from defense or special teams. So that holds up. 38 points. Almost all of it, 31 I guess, would have been by our offense. There's every reason to be excited. Um... I, I, I guess I would just say don't don't feel the need to hold back. We'll recalibrate next week when we look at the next opponent and kind of pump the brakes a little bit like, look, we don't know. We'll see how it goes, et cetera, et cetera. But, but for this week, just let yourself have fun, man. We've had such a brutal offseason. We've had so many people talking crap, saying that, 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 that Justin Fields is going to, going to win MVP and the, the Packers are going to be bottom of the division and all this nonsense. Don't feel the need to throttle down right now so anyways again if you are in the comment section please feel free to let me know that you can actually hear this call that would be great thank you yeah it's justin again uh, hey well, justin you know what you guys are my friends you can call me pepper uh pepper <laughs> you stripper i just i just gotta say more god damn it that was it was lethargic just everyone talking so much shit this team whew, it's gonna be better than i expected i think I'm not, I keep saying it, but I don't want to temper my expectations because it's the Bears, but bring Watson back. Justin. As long as Jones is okay, Quay Walker, that interception for a touchdown. Oh, God. I just can't keep hyping myself up. I'm, I'm excited. You guys should be excited. And like I said, them coming out in the second half and doing something big change from the years recently. Let's go. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And um, again, don't feel the need to, to throttle down. But we'll, again, we'll do that. We'll do that on like Saturday when we're looking at the next opponent. For now, just get hyped up, man. Just get all hyped up. All we need to do is talk as much trash as we can because we earn the right. That's the point. That's the benefit of winning. You earn the right to talk trash. That's what Bears fans have never figured out. You have to earn the right to talk trash. They haven't earned that. And now they have to pay for running their mouth in the offseason. They're out there 
spending money that they didn't earn. So now they got to pay the debt. That's how that goes. Sucks to be you guys. All right, let's back it up here a little bit. We're looking at, uh, man, I'm trying to think. When did the game end? Let's just go. Let's go to Chris from Alabama. I feel like this is a good area. We got a lot of calls to get through today. Oh, what's going on, Ryan? Chris from Alabama. Chris from man. Alabama. Uh, just call it halftime. Uh, first half. First half. I'm 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 okay. I'm okay. Hey, I'm okay. I'm okay after the first half. Saw some saw some good things, saw some bad things in that first half, but ten six, half time, we get the ball coming out second half. Hey, first drive looked good. Uh next couple of drives were kinda shaky. Little miscommunication on that last drive with uh Love and Musgrave, but all in all, hey, we up. Ten six. We got a whole nother half to play, and we start off with the ball. So it's all up from there. We got there. points at the end of the half, which was good. Would have been better if we had a touchdown, of course. No, but hey, points is points. Anderson Carlson with a 52 yard field goal. Ain't no, no kind of problem on mechanics or nothing like that. So hey, I'm comfortable. I'm good. I know that first drive in the second half, we need to come out in the staff with ourselves. Like, Man, that time, but yeah, I'm satisfied, man. So as of right now, see, we good to go, man. Let's just see if we can finish the job. Go back, go, and I'll talk to y'all after the game. I think I just realized when I switched my uh, my software, I think I'm on the wrong YouTube channel. <laughs> so there's some some YouTube channel out there in the middle of nowhere that nobody even knows about that's got this, and I don't think I can change it. All right, whatever. Facebook, what's going on, man? Facebook in the house. Uh, yeah, man, it's, um, it's real good to, uh, it's, it's, it's always good to hear the calls from like halftime because it's like, yeah, things look good, but I just don't know being on this side of it, knowing that we've got 28 more points to score, 28 points. That's freaking crazy. That's absolutely ridiculous. And the horror continues for the Chicago Bears, <laughs> who are going to continue to be dominated by the Green Bay Packers for the rest of their existence, their pitiful, pitiful existence in shoulder field. Uh, can't watch the game because I'm at work and it's not on up here in Alaska that I know of, so I'm struggling with the, the streaming service to be able to listen to Larrabee and, and them. Um, but even through that, man, I, I can just hear the, the sorrow and the pain coming from Soldier Field. This is so great. And, you know, and however the rest of the season goes, I think it's been mentioned, we're crushing the Bears. And we're going to keep crushing the Bears. Go Pack! Woo! Aaron, Aaron, Jones, <laughs> Aaron Jones made the comment. I, th- I saw this on Twitter. I've barely been on Twitter. I immediately jumped on the stream with uh, Clayton, and then I started doing this. But I tried to pick up a couple things. He was asked the question, uh, what, what kind of a statement – does this send? And he said, nothing changes. We're still the Packers. Talking about beating the Chicago Bears. I love that. I thought that that was fantastic. Aaron, what's going on? Hey, Ryan, this is Aaron. I I was literally just about to pick up the phone, call you, and talk about Luke Musgrave. And then Quay Walker had a pick six. <laughs> and I Best play of the game. flipped my... Just let um, it out. Just let it out. I, I just went crazy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the Bears. Uh, Bears fans have to be so happy right now that Aaron Rodgers is gone and <laughs> they have Justin Fields as their quarterback to lead them into the future. Yeah. Um, but anyways, Feeling good my today. original reason why I was originally going to call you is that when – it, when Ro- Jordan Love overthrew Luke Musgrave in the preseason, it looked like an overthrow or whatever. However, the two throws that he, like, quote-unquote, overthrew Luke Musgrave today were all on Luke Musgrave. Yeah, I think so. For, like, he literally stopped, turned around, and, like, tried to backpedal to where the ball was going to be. And it's like, dude, if you just keep running, Jordan Love has a perfect placement. That's two... I mean, I don't want to say two touchdowns taken away, but that's one for sure touchdown that Romeo Dobbs ended up getting instead of Luke Musgrave. And Aaron Jones ended up getting instead of Luke Musgrave. But anyways, um, first of all, don't ever let Jonesy go. I don't care. Like, 
he is this offense, and I love Aaron Jones. Um, and I think Luke Musgrave is going to get on the same page as Jordan Love, so that's not as concerning as it could put, could potentially be. I think he realized that he, the issue at hand. Uh, but anyways, Quay Walker just returned to pick six, and it, so good reliving it. It is incredible right now. Oh my Lanta. <laughs> okay, well, bye. You know, I I remember this actually happening with Christian Watson. Funny as it as it is, considering Luke Musgrave is sort of our tight end version of Christian Watson, but he had a lot of the same issues as far as when he would run down the field. It was just awkward. Obviously, there was the drop, but it was more than that. He had other times where he would like turn the wrong way and he would try to put his hands up and do all this kind of stuff, and um, it just it just wasn't working. But he figured it out, right? So. Um, yeah, I think I think we just got to kind of work on that a little bit. I do think it was two touchdowns, probably. The first one might have still been overthrown. He he still like slowed down, and I don't know why, but it was still a little ways over his head. So I don't know. I'm not entirely sure um, if that would have been overthrown or not. But the second one, I, I I think there's a good chance that Musgrave missed out on two really deep touchdowns. And what what kind of a conversation are we having today if Musgrave had like 85 yards and two touchdowns in this game? Very different kind of a thing. Hi, Ryan. This is Randy from Minnesota. Hey, Randy. First time caller. I love your show. Thank you. Love everything about it. All the guys. Just saw the an INT. Oh, my God. I am so happy. <laughs> this is going to be all go pack go. Play calls. And, my God, can we please beat Minnesota? Thank you. Goodbye. I haven't been that jacked up about anything Green Bay Packers in a long time. That interception by Quay Walker, I lost it. Because at that point, we had basically won the game, right? There was still a chance it can come back, but pretty much not. So I'm feeling good. I'm more or less euphoric. The defense is doing a good job holding things up. And then just the absolute cherry on top, Justin Fields, who had been fine all day. Obviously, him, his whole thing with escaping pressures and whatnot, he did a good job. The passing was decent, I guess. But then he just does a classic Justin Fields staring down the middle of the field, throws it right to a defender, and then for Quay to return that all the way for a touchdown. It looked like he wasn't going to get more than five yards. Slams right into a guy who doesn't bring him down, ping-pongs his way all the way into the end zone. I freaking lost it, man. I, I My son was asking me, why are you laughing so much? Because I did a lap around the house, screaming, scared the living crap out of my dog. And for the next 10 minutes, I'm just cackling to myself. And it was every time they'd show the scoreboard, it was the same thing. I'm just, I'm just laughing. So, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a moment like that in a long time. I mean, honestly, one of the only times I remember going that insane was the first, the, the Detroit Lions Hail Mary by Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I, I just, that, that was the most joyful moment as a Packer fan that I've had in, in quite a while. I mean, the, the, the Christian Watson game was also pretty fantastic, but I, I didn't almost lose my voice on those. Yo, Aaron again. Um, so on the TV, uh, Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson are talking about how it's week one, and Kevin Burkhart is just keeps being like, yo, this is week one. And this is a much different feel than the Aaron Rodgers team. It, it's week one, and but it feels like it's so – oh. Oh, <laughs> Justin Fields just got sacked. Uh, oh, my gosh, Carl Brooks. I love you. <laughs> yes. Anyways, um, so they're talking about how it's week one, but it has a completely different feel, and it just feels like the Packers are in complete midseason form. They're just firing on all cylinders. And think about it. This is week one. Honestly, I completely forgot about that. This does not feel like a week one Packers team. Right. At all. From what we've seen the last few seasons, this has been such a turnaround. I don't even, I can't, un, I, like, it's just crazy to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the last time we've done something and like this. And there's still some Packers fans being negative about this. <laughs> but hey, you know what, that's on them. They're actually not Packer fans, they're Jets fans. But anyways, um, the Jets play tomorrow, so they can worry about entirely that. Entirely possible. Just, watching this team, everyone's playing for everyone else yep. and if there's a mistake they come back with some big play and they come back and hit it hard and it's so great to see 
everything about this whole team, I'm loving this. Um, like they said, though, it is week one, so we'll see going forward. It is, is also the Chicago Bears that we're playing, so who knows. Um, but I like this team. I said it there. I like this team. But, yeah, anyways, have a good night. You're going to get a billion calls, probably <laughs> similar to mine. So have a good night. Bye, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, look, look, it it was not a flawless game. I mean, there very rarely are flawless games, but that's actually a good thing. It's week one. Of course there's going to be mistakes. Of course there's going to be penalties. Of course there's going to be errant throws and wrong run routes and and all kinds of nonsense and broken broken coverages. We scored 38 points. We won basically 38 to 14. That um, that last one it was basically garbage time. We we I think we had Corey uh, uh, we had uh, Valentine in I think by the time that they had gotten to twenty points. So um, the fact that this is week one and Jordan loves really pretty much his first start ever. I mean, if you want to call that Chiefs game where he got thrown in randomly in the middle of a week somewhere, his first start fine, whatever. I don't really care. This is his first start. This is his first time actually being the starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. It, it, just, it, it, it shouldn't go this way. It shouldn't have been like this. And it was. You know, the, the, the run game, the, the run blocking. Aaron Jones did, had one of the best games I've seen him play, like ever, because the run blocking just wasn't really, really good. But he made magic happen when there was nothing there. But, but these are things that we can clean up. You know, I, 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 I won't dog the guy, I guess. There's one guy in particular that I just was very frustrated with. Well, maybe two, I guess. Don't need to worry about that right now. We can focus on that on tomorrow's podcast. But um, the fact that it's week one and there's a lot of room for growth, the fact that this is the first time that Jordan Love and Jaden Reed and Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs have ever played, or Christian Watson wasn't even in there, but have even played a game together. And we didn't have Watson, which is kind of also a big point. This is the first time, you know, Carl Brooks has played a game and he ends up with a sack in the game. This is the first time Lucas Van Ness has ever played a game. You think these guys aren't going to get better? 38 points. I mean, this is all good news. These are these are all good tidbits of information. Ryan, it's a- Aaron from Eau Claire. What's going on? Um, just uh, watching... Quay Walker walk into the end zone with a pick six of Justin Fields, and uh, it looks like it looks like the uh, all the stuff about the Packers can't possibly be better than last year because they lost Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yeah, I guess we can uh, put that one to bed. Go yeah. back out. Well, and and it's I'm I'm very interested to see and start pulling receipts and seeing what people are saying. Because, again, it never made sense. It never made sense. The idea that Rodgers is gone, and so now things, oh, what, you think you can be good without Rod? You think you could just lose a Hall of Famer and be good? Yes. Yes, I do think that. If the team is good, I think they can be good. What is not good about the football team? What, what, what about that ever made sense? Nothing about that ever made sense. It, it was always stupid, but people believed it. And so I, I, I really look forward to seeing the backpedaling and seeing what people have to say. Are they going to throw the Bears under the bus, the team that everybody's been bragging about? Probably. That'll probably be the move for a lot of people. Well, you know, I mean, I guess good for the Packers, but let's be honest. I mean, I think we, we just, we maybe bought into the Bears maybe a year too early. They still got a year to go because that was an ugly, or, or just flat out blame it on just being week one. They'll be ready by week two, and it was just a fluke. I don't know. That's the good thing about winning and scoring 38 points is it's hard to call that completely a fluke. But, um, yeah, it was, it was always stupid. Of course this can happen. I didn't expect it to happen week one. I thought maybe we'd have one of these games this year. And maybe we will, but I, I didn't really expect it to be week one. But, um, yeah, I, 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 just, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. We're not going to start tomorrow because I, I need I need a lot of time to start preparing and um, listening to um, Chicago Bears radio meltdown and everything else and put together a nice little podcast for you fine folks. But um, 
It was always stupid, and they kept running their mouth, and that was a mistake. And now our job is to make them pay for that, and I intend to lead the charge. Tell you what, why don't we take uh, the first little break here? Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I really do appreciate that. By the way, for the, the couple of you on YouTube, I don't know if you are regular subscribers that just found me. There's there's another YouTube channel. This one is not one that I use. I messed up. I streamed to the wrong one. Packernet Podcast. Go find it. Go subscribe, please. Thank you. Um, unless you just happen to find it on accident, then um, congratulations. But uh, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Death, taxes, and the Bears still suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, it wasn't even hasn't even been a clean game for us. There's a few minutes left, but it's right. over. But hasn't even been a clean game for us. I I just hope Jaden Reed's okay. But uh, go pack, go. The Bears suck, bro. We weren't even ready. <laughs> we, that, that should have been a game where we got blown out. If it had been even a competent team, I'm just talking trash. I mean, it it, it wasn't clean, but it, it was it was like a normal not clean game, not like a week one disaster like we're seeing all around the league right now. Like the Kansas City Chiefs, to be honest. I mean, what kind of a meltdown was that? What what an unbelievable performance by the Packers. I can't even freaking believe this. Here comes the media dorm. 1265 fan. Hi. Wow. I mean, wow. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Wow. Wowza. Wowie, wow, wow. <laughs> wow. Happy. Oh, okay, shoot. Bye. I'm, I'm telling you guys you can call in, and I forgot to uh, to actually change the setting on here. I apologize. You can call in now if you like. Why don't we get to the uh, the new caller that probably tried to call in and uh, made him, you know, didn't, it just went to voicemail. Hey, Ryan. Um, this is Deed from Texas. What's going on, man? Uh, deed as in a deed of a home or a good or bad deed. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. A couple hours after the game, I'm still buzzing. Uh, actually, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that I kind of want to temper my expectations a bit. Despite the 38 points we just hung on the Bears, I felt like the first half was a bit underwhelming and actually – the score didn't really translate to the output I saw because I honestly was quite impressed with the Bears and I feel like they're matching up I kinda really was well against us. And dare I say they're like outplaying us. They paid a little bit. better than I thought they would. Um, well, let, let me tell you what I think the difference was in this game because I, I, I don't want to downplay what the Packers did too much and say the Bears outplayed us because I... I l- l- they couldn't block to save their lives. I think Justin Fields, aside from escaping the pocket, mostly he, he didn't really do anything. Um, the wide receivers were erased in this game, aside from Darnell Mooney getting open a couple times. Um, here, here's what I noticed about this game. The Packers were efficient. Let me just look at something real quick. Team stats. Um, the Bears actually had more time of possession. The Bears ran 10 more plays, and the Bears had just like 20 less yards. I think it was like 18 less yards. Why was the score so massively different? The reason is, in the red zone, we were 100%. We were 3-for-3 three three in the red zone. That's a big freaking deal. They were 1-for-2. Third down efficiency, we were 56%. We did a very good job on third down. They were 23%. I, to- I, I said this on the podcast a week or two ago, whatever. We have done such an unbelievable job in the red zone. Like, every time we get down there, we score. That is going to translate in a major, major, major way. We were the number one team in the red zone the year that we uh, were the number one offense in football. There is a very high correlation there. And and in 2022, when our offense tanked, we couldn't get we couldn't punch it in. That was the whole problem. We have been unbelievably good when we get down there. Three for three in the red zone makes a difference. Having double the third down conversion rate of your opponent makes a massive difference. So it's not always just about output. It's about efficiency. It's about making the plays that matter, not just making plays. Like I made ten plays, you made ten plays, we did the same. No. 
your 10 plays were stupid and our 10 plays, you know, were, were the critical ones. I, I, I think that's kind of the main idea here. And I just think there was a lot of miscommunications between Jordan Love and his receivers. Uh, just a bit of ugly ball being played. But at the end of the day, rookie mistakes. Uh, I think a lot of things that are just going to get ironed out over time. But, man, I'm really, really excited about the potential that we have here. And, yeah, I'm just going to have a great week because of this. Jeez. Anyways, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day or whenever they listen to this and go pack go yeah and don't be too hard on them they made mistakes they didn't make nearly the amount of mistakes of, of of basically any other team in the nfl this week they made significantly less and this is a team that has that is loaded with first-time starters including the quarterback so um you're right there were there were some things that i wish were better i thought i wish the blocking was better Pass blocking seemed okay, although I thought Jordan was under a little more pressure than I thought he would. Um, and the uh, the run blocking, I th- I I personally thought was was terrible. But but again, it's week one, man. There's a lot to iron out. I mean, preseason and practice can only teach you so much. This is when the coaches can really get back, look at the tape, and go, "All right, first of all, scratch this entirely from from the playbook." And then, you know, we'll, we'll hone in on this and that and the other thing. And, and, and again, hopefully get Christian Watson back, and that opens everything wide open again. But, um, yeah, don't, don't, be, uh, don't be too discouraged by the negative. Partially because the negative is not going away. Like, <laughs> there's, there's always going to be negatives. There were negatives when Rodgers was here. There was negatives the year we won the Super Bowl. Every year we won the Super Bowl. There's always negatives. There's always problems. But 38 points doesn't happen on accident. So allow yourself to be excited and understand that a lot of these things will get ironed out, as you said. Hey, Ryan, it's Jersey Mike. Hey. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm calling with uh, two minutes left in the fourth year. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Um, I don't know what happened when Christian Watson comes back, but this team, this team is electric on offense, and this defense is just nasty. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to fault them for giving up the points that they did. Uh, they played really, really good defense. Yeah. Um, DJ Moore doing nothing. Awesome. Darnell Mooney doing nothing. Awesome. I mean, you can count the touchdown or something, but I don't, I don't, I don't really care. That touchdown is nothing. The only time that Bears are scoring is, in my opinion, garbage time. We, we, we've had this game, game in hand since like midway through the third quarter. Uh, I'm really, really excited. Lucas Van Ness looking awesome. Look Carl Brooks looking good. Yeah. Devontae Wyatt looking amazing. Uh, Barry, every single time he's in, there's a pressure. And they, I, I'm going to be real here. I hate these refs because the entire time the Bears offensive line has been doing nothing but holding. Oh, 100%. Um, but, but. I, I, and I know this happens almost every game, but I, it was really getting ridiculous. Especially when it's like around the back. We, we've we got guys that have gotten past the offensive linemen, so they're facing the referee, and they're hooked around the neck, and they're not getting calls. Like, you know, at, at some point, I understand, like, you got to kind of let some stuff go, but some of these were like, you've, you've got to be kidding me. Like, are the refs just watching the game? Like, oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to you. I was watching the play. I was trying to see if he was going to get out of there and complete a pass or something. What, what, what are you watching? Where I really want to look at, Right now, uh, my highlight, I mean, Aaron Jones, you do your thing, but I, I kind of feel like we know what we have with Aaron Jones. But Luke Musgrave, watch out. <laughs> watch. He, he, without Christian Watson, I was wondering what the heck we were going to do throwing the ball deep. Um, and, and Musgrave didn't get a bunch of shots. He, he's got electric speed. I mean, he, he had multiple times where he was just wide open over the top of the defense behind the safeties. And if Jordan Love would have seen him, he could have had touchdowns. I think it was like two or three times. Um, it's ridiculous. It's just the, that guy is the X factor that we were not expecting him to be. I mean, what, we saw two, three games in college? So right now, I'm just, I'm super stoked. Oh, also, put them bears down, baby. I'm sick and tired of this. Justin Fields ain't nothing. He's dog doo-doo. Yeah. Anyway, go pack go. 
I'm glad you brought that up. J uh, Jordan Love has been um, characterized as sort of a dink and dunk master by Bears fans. I just want to point this out here real quick. Yards per uh, attempt. Justin Fields was 5.1. 5.1 would have ranked um, 41st last year among quarterbacks. Our quarterback, yards per attempt, was 8.8, .8, which would be ranked second in the NFL behind only Tua Tungavailoa at 8.9. The next highest was Brock Purdy at 8.3. The... Um, Yards per completion. Is that a thing I can find on here? Yards per completion? Uh, I don't know if it is. I feel like it should be. Anyways, yards per completion in this game, 15.8 yards per completion. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't really realize that, but that is ridiculous. Justin Fields, 7.9, not even close. So that... Um, that is pretty staggering. I'm sorry in advance. Kinda. The bears still suck. The bears still suck. The bears still suck. The bears still suck. They really, 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 really suck. Oh, the bears still suck. I gotta be honest, there's a part of me that's sad that I'm doing this because I just, I just, I just want to go on social media and I just want to go on YouTube and I just want to hear what everybody's saying and I just want to laugh and I just want to enjoy it. I want to listen to it because you guys have been talking way too much and um, I know they're pretty, uh, they're pretty depressed down there, but it's, it's, listen, it's what I said all off season. You're doing it to yourselves. You're setting yourselves up to fail. You, 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 these guys set their expectations so high. They talk so much crap about the Packers. Like, you guys, you have a trash roster. You have the, And I, I would tell them, like, I'd get into these social media arguments, and I would tell them, I'd be like, you're setting yourself up to be really hurt. If you don't think we have superstars on this team, if you don't think guys like Bakhtiari and Rashawn Gary and Jair Alexander are superstars, they, I mean, they, they, oh, Jair's a bum. He got beat by Nikhil Harry that one time. Man, you guys are... are you're really, really going to be depressed very soon. Oh, Rashawn Gary, you guys overhype him. He's not that good. Oh, you poor, sweet summer child. And it happened. This is what happened. And I can't wait to hear what their excuses are. But the bottom line is, reality just smacked them in the mouth. That's the reality. The Packers were always a better team than them. And it was never just about Aaron Rodgers. That's not true. It wasn't the, it wasn't Aaron Rodgers. How if you listen to the podcast, estimate for me how many times you've heard me say this sentence. It's not true that the Green Bay Packers are nothing more than Aaron Rodgers dra dra dragging around, didn't hear me say it exactly like this, uh, a dead weight football team. That's not true. It is a it is a not true characterization of the situation it is disrespectful to the massive amount of talent that we have on this team said it I, I had to have said it a thousand times nobody wanted to listen Packer fans you guys listen you guys know I don't you don't need to hear me say it you already know what we have on this team aside from the you know Gutekunst haters who want to believe all oh, this team is just garbage there's no talent on this team it's Aaron Rodgers and he has no help okay whatever just dumb dumb a lot of help on this team. Very good football team. <sighs> but, but again, I can't feel sorry for Bears fans. They did this to themselves. They were the ones that overhyped their wide receivers. They overhyped their quarterback. They overhyped their defense. They overhyped their offensive line. They overhyped their running backs, although that guy from Texas does look pretty freaking brutal. And they constantly undersold the Green Bay Packers. They got punched in the mouth only because they set themselves up. They set a trap for themselves and then just walked into it. That's 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 essentially what happened. Hello. <laughs> this is caller number five. What's going on, uh, Playa? It's currently 38 to 20. There's a garbage time touchdown for the Bears. That doesn't matter. Uh, let me get the bad out of the way. A.J. Dillon looked horrible, uh, and that's really disappointing. Maybe you can clarify what... 
Here's the thing, and this is the way I always feel about A.J. Dillon. Does anybody remember a time where A.J. Dillon basically just didn't get hit in the backfield? I, 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 just, I just feel like there's no way for him to go. Maybe I'm wrong. I, f I feel more like it's a testament to Aaron Jones for finding somewhere to run when there was nowhere to run. Maybe Dillon's just too slow out of the gate so that the hole closes or something, but every time I see that, he just gets swallowed up. Like, I don't know what... what it, the, the whole point is, what is he doing compared to what do we expect him to do? I don't see any gaping holes for him to run through. There's, there's nothing. There's very rarely anywhere for him to go. So I could be wrong about this. Maybe A.J. Dillon does just suck. I don't know. Patrick Taylor seemed to have more success when he came in. He found a way to, to push the ball down the field. But I don't know. I, I, just, I have a hard time because I just don't see what should have been done differently. That's why I've been ragging on the offensive line's run blocking. But but maybe it's not the run blocking. Maybe it's Dylan off to go back and watch again. But I just I just did not see anywhere for that guy to run. He just not getting blocked for blah blah blah. Anyway, it's thirty eight to twenty. We scored thirty one points on offense without our number one receiver. <laughs> right. Jordan Love had a hundred and twenty three <laughs> rating. I wonder what his PFF grade is going to be. Probably in the high sixties, maybe low seventies. Um, but either way, this this defense that you spent all this money on, we put up 31 in your house. <laughs> oh, no. It took a defensive miscommunication for you to score your, your only touchdown. Well, besides the garbage time one. Uh, this is just, oh, man. How does it feel? <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. It couldn't have gotten any better. And the Vikings lost. Oh, this is just great, man. God, I love football. Anyway. Have a good one. I'm sure you got a lot of calls. Yeah, we're uh, I'm gonna try to rip through as many of these as we possibly can. But um, yeah, I mean that's that's just another another good point. The the Bears, and and I said too coming into this game, it meant more to them than it did to us. This is us just warming up, man. This is us just seeing, kind of feeling things out a little bit, see how it goes. You know, maybe we can uh, put some stuff together. We'll put some stuff on tape, see what we need to fix, whatever. It's a little warm up game. This this is freaking year three for Fields, man. Year three for Fields. What uh, what did he do? Seventy eight point two passer rating with a pick six. I you know, it is what it is. I guess, man. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. But yeah, they they're the ones that spent all the money. They they spent a hundred million dollars in free agency, apparently. And and I, I said, I don't know where all the money went. You, you got a guard and a couple of freaking linebackers. whoop de doo But um, still, you spent that money. What did it get you? How much do you suck to spend $100 million on premier football players and you get whooped week one by a team that's, like, never played before? 38 to 20 in your own house. You're 0-1 in Soldier Field. Congratulations. Hey, it's Jersey Mike. Real quick, uh, remember when I said I was a thousand percent positive that uh, a guy by the name of Anthony Richardson was better than Justin Fields? Well, I'm right. Anyway, stupid Bears fans, I'm right again. Go Pat, go. I uh, I have Anthony Richardson on my fantasy football team on the bench, and um, I was happy with the number he put up. I got 22 points out of him. Um, it does seem like he's. So far, done better than Fields did. I don't know what what oh it says sixteen point five. I don't know what these fantasy points are, but um, that is one of the things that I had hoped is that Anthony Richardson would be a better version of Justin Fields, so we would stop hearing about Justin Fields. And so far, step one, it seems to have happened. So hopefully, we can turn our attention now to the other guy that runs really, really well and is impressive and imposing and all that stuff. Plus, we already have Lamar, you know. Like, we got guys that can do it. Do we need another one? Do we need an, a, another hero that runs around? I don't think so. Can we Can we just give up on this? I, I'd love to know if this week if people are just going to start jumping ship. Bears fans are better going to start jumping ship. They jump ship in the second quarter. <laughs> they're they're going to start jumping ship for sure. Ryan, Chris from Alabama, man. What up? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that. Right there is what I'm talking about. Right there. That, my friend. So glad you called back in. Out there in Pacanet Land <sighs> is what I call a, 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 a slobber knocker. 
That's it's what I'm going to have to call it right it's now. That's a good word. Because all this garbage that was taught all off season, the Bears going to do this. The Bears going to do that. Justin Fields this. Justin Fields that. Jordan Love can't process the game. Jordan Love can't do this. I don't see any wow. I don't need wow. They ain't the W I'm looking for. I'm looking for win. And what do we go out there and do with Jordan Love? Win. In. In, in in convincing fashion, may I add, convincing fashion. Man, I can't wait till tomorrow when everybody try to backtrack and back talk. All this garbage they were spewing all oh, all season. Oh, oh, where the bear fans at now? I bet if I check on Twitter, they ain't, they gonna be nowhere to be found. They gonna be off on Gilligan Island. Somewhere. You know what's funny? I said I was going to be nice to Bears fans, but I'm I'm constantly getting reminded because other Packer fans are pulling receipts. You can tell where they put bookmarks. So people are like commenting on stuff from like two months ago that I just happen to be in that thread. And it's like, I want to jump in there. It's And it's it's one of those that I spent like an entire day going back and forth with Bears fans. And it's like, you know what? I remember this conversation. I remember how much of a D-bag you were and how much you pissed me off. And I feel like I'm going to come in here and just troll the living crap out of you. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I might be up all night, just pulling an all-nighter. Just just, just not sleep and just troll Bears fans. Because that, that might just need to happen. Also, somebody else reminded me that I won some money off a of Bears fan. I know they won't pay up, so it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah. Well, because they don't want to deal with none of the mess that's coming their way. Hey, love pay a good game. Wasn't a spectacular 245 yards, three touchdowns. It's a good game. It's a good game to start off. And Jones, hopefully Aaron Jones is all right. He, like he had an hamstring uh, issue. Hopefully he all right. Romeo Dobb, two touchdowns now. Made the catches when they count. Yards don't matter. You made it, you, you got two touchdowns, so you made two key catches. You made another key catch. Jaden Reed, Jaden Reed, you got you to gotta get them them drop issues. and You got to catch the football. There's a couple of them you should have called. I know because it contested. But you should have caught them. Hey, it's all good. Then we won. We won. We beat the Bears. They sorry. Justin Fields is trash. Trash. I don't want to hear no more about Justin Fields. Right. Trash. No more. We Not did another freaking word pack, about go. that guy. We won. Victory. On on to the next game. On that Atlanta. On that Atlanta. Good play. Go ahead and clean up what we need to clean up. Yep. And on to that Atlanta, man. I'm good. Man, I feel good, man. Bears, trash. They still trash. <laughs> go pack, go, and I'm gone. I yeah. The the only word I could describe when I went on that live stream right after was euphoric, and I, I'm starting to get the impression that I'm not the only one. I think all of us are kind of getting that feeling. I'm trying to see what Atlanta did. I can't find them for some reason. Oh, there they are. Twenty four ten over Carolina. I'll have to check into that later. Um, I'm actually feeling kind of good about that. I mean, I know Desmond Ritter isn't exactly a uh, a, a statue in the pocket, but man, we got so much pressure on Justin Fields, and he's just such a freaking Houdini in that pocket getting out of there. I can't wait to unleash the hounds on a quarterback that isn't like any anybody else, like him, Lamar, Anthony Richardson are like the three that probably suck to go after. But um, other than that, like I, I just I want to see these guys just i mean we smoke justin fields my favorite my my the absolute best um sack of the day was the one that didn't count rashawn gary just unbelievable i can't believe justin fields got up that dude deserves credit i got somebody um bears fans are deleting their accounts right like actually deleting their accounts somebody quote tweeted something i said and then tagged a Bears fan, and I clicked that, and it says this account doesn't exist. Literally deleting their accounts right now. Good, good. You need to delete your accounts. Yeah, uh, uh, Garrett, by the way, says he won two bets. I'll read a couple of these, by the way. Nick Cooper, defensive front, was getting pressure all day long. Seemed like every play Gary came in, he was in the backfield. Absolutely true. True. Nick talking about Atlanta here. Says Atlanta's running backs look good. I, I did see that a little bit. Tyler Algier was doing all right, and Bijan was... 
I didn't see the plays, but I, I saw he was getting like a, at least one touchdown. I, I I kept getting updates on that stuff. I was like, oh man, that guy's gonna that guy's gonna take off, isn't he? But then Logan says, 30 years, another 30 years, it's going to be another 30 years for Zool Douglas, which was funny. I don't know if you caught that in the locker room. He was talking about it's been 60 years, 30 years of Brett Favre, 30 years of Rodgers, and they're like, I don't think that adds up, man. It's not the right math. <coughs> so I think he's kind of picking on himself a little bit, while at the same time praising Justin Fields and or, or Jordan Love. I will never stop doing that. Um, even, even 10 years into this uh, career of Jordan Love, when Justin Fields has been out for nine I, uh, I'm still going to be calling him Justin Fields, but making fun of himself and, um, talking about how we got another 30 years in Jordan Love, man, I, I'm, I'm excited about how much these guys are rallying around. I don't know if you guys saw the video of Rashawn Gary when he was doing the press conference, that dude was jacked up, um, for Jordan Love. You got to go find that. Uh, that, that gave me some chills. And then we got Jesse Bates had two picks and a forced fumble. That's a good football player, man. He's a good football player. Maybe Atlanta's got something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, they're not a great football team. They do have a better offensive line, I think, than the Bears do. Probably a better defense, but it's pretty rough. Uh, they, they might not even, actually. They, they, well, I think they actually have some superstars, but they also, I think, have some serious weaknesses. They don't have as many like good players. Like The Bears have the two linebackers, the two safeties. I don't know. Um, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come there. Adam Shine. Oh, Adam Shine. He's, he's out blocking people. I got to go get blocked by Adam Shine. Oh, that's my goal for the day. Clayton got blocked. He, he put Adam Shine on a milk cart and said, anybody seen Adam Shine? <laughs> and he got blocked. Oh, I love today. It is the best day. Um, all right. Yeah, let's get back to the call. Sorry about that. Where are we at here? Um, Nico, what's going on? So, Nico, dry, uh, sorry, riding my bike back to my house. Okay. Uh, I tried this a couple weeks ago. Didn't work out so good. So I'm going to go a lot slower. Maybe you can hear me. Um, so clearly I'm happy. Sorry, I'm, I'm perusing through Twitter here. I made a comment about DJ Moore and, uh, Joel Midget88 says DJ Less. <laughs> oh, I love today. I know a couple of people left with injury. I hope they're good. I hope Jones was still laughing and smiling on the sideline. I think maybe he just was a little dehydrated, hopefully. Reed kind of scares me, but we'll see. Um, i tell you what, if Reed's hurt, that's a bummer, but as long as Bakhtiari doesn't get hurt and none of the defensive line gets hurt because that defensive line was eaten all day, um, Jordan Love went in there and did, he really took what he could and did it. Uh, just a great game. Defensively, you know, there was a sack right before the interception for the touchdown. There was a sack where, like, Justin took the, took the snap and just ran forward and got stopped. Maybe he went past the line of scrimmage, but I don't remember that sack getting down the stack. So, uh, help me out. Maybe it'll hit the FF. But no. Very happy with the game. The defensive line did what they did. Luke Van Ness got back. And uh, I'm pretty excited. So, hey, go back, go. And I'm sure you got a couple of the phone calls coming in. So, uh, and we'll let them all, we'll let them hit. So. Very excited to see what we got as far as PFF. I, I think it would be, and, and drop a comment if you have some thoughts, who it is that's going to have the highest PFF grade. Probably Aaron Jones, if I had to guess. Aaron Jones was unbelievable. Um, I'm trying to think who else. It could be a defensive lineman. It could have Rashawn Gary or somebody else. It's hard to know, like kind of play to play to play basis. Who ended up having a good day? Um, Quay, I would assume, has a pretty good grade, especially with that pick six. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I I wanted to shoot. Where did it go? Did I? I thought I say. Oh, is this it? Uh, yes. This is uh the notorious Lex. On, um, I think she's a Bears fan. She posted this on Twitter. She said, Some wild stuff I heard slash saw on the long walk from Soldier Field to the Loop. Number one, a guy took his jersey off and threw it in a garbage can. Number two, quote, this is a quote she heard, that was Ron Turner terrible, unquote. Uh, number three, another quote, Arlington Heights can have this bull, you know what. And then number four, 
a guy broke up with his Packers fan girlfriend because she was smiling too much. <laughs> I Listen, I told you, man, this is going to break them. Like 100%, they're going to be broken mentally, emotionally. And we, we even heard Bears fans say this. They're going to be driving into Lake Michigan. That's what's happening. <laughs> they're freaking broken. Uh, shoot. Um, hmm. I'll just slide a, uh, another break in there somewhere. Let's just continue on, continuing on, because we're almost done here. I got I to gotta actually do the podcast soon. Hey, it's Aaron from Eau Claire, and uh, just finished watching the game. Um, I think we can all feel pretty good about that one. And um, I noticed that uh, Jordan so. Love just seemed to take it all with a lot of, you know, patience. Uh, he wasn't just over there celebrating, uh, over, over celebrating on the sideline. It seemed like he was aware that, you know, there's a job to be done week after week. And I just appreciate that about him. Um, and then can we please start giving some more credit to, uh, Matt LaFleur as a, well, I just, that's more for the national media. Um, but, uh, you know, we don't have the Aaron Rodgers was the, was the whole reason he was successful Imagine that. anymore. So, uh, go Pat, go. Yeah, it's another receipt I'd love to pull. All the people... The, the guy was snubbed on Coach of the Year after going 13 wins three years in a row because of this stupid, idiotic, and moronic idea that the only reason the team is doing what it's doing is because of Aaron Rodgers, despite the fact that a year prior to his arrival, the team with Aaron Rodgers didn't even have a winning record. And so, yeah, I, I guess now we all, what, 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 we're all shocked. Damage is done, man. I don't know. He, 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 he needs to start getting some serious recognition. There need to be some um, apologies going around for the way that he's been slighted. You got uh, Lombardi out there calling him Matt Love F., Saying that he's he doesn't know what he's doing and all this stuff. Screw this is it's so it's so stupid and disrespectful. Hey, Ryan. Hey, go get off your bike. Uh, had to call back because I'm, I'm I listened to a live YouTube webcast. Okay. He's got like Dave Wong stats. By the way, this guy looks amazing. I wish he was their coach again because he was a great coach. As far as we concerned. I love but, Wanstead. Oh my gosh, it's so late. They're just complaining. They're just complaining. DJ Moore is supposed to be the number one receiver. He had two catches. Justin Fields. He can't he can't he can't make the passes. What? I mean it's it's really what? really fun watching listening to them to squirm. Because they're they're being they're being exactly right. Yeah. DJ Moore might be a great receiver, you know, with the team, with the quarterback. Yeah, um, one yeah. of these days, maybe uh, he will. The one guy was just complaining about one thing. I don't know who it is, but he's complaining about the interception. He said, I don't know who he was throwing to. Yes, he was throwing to Clay Walker, just so <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, it's it's very, very funny listening to him squirm. You know, like like worms on a hot, on a hot asphalt. They're just, they don't know what to do. <laughs> a couple of them were acting like, it's all Jordan Love's fault. I'm sorry, it's all Justin Fields' fault. Yeah, it is kind of because he's, like I said, he's, we've all said this, he's a great running back. Not the best quarterback. So, I tell you. What I a, can't wait. What an emotional release. Yes. Um, for a humongous buildup because we haven't had a non rogers slash Favre starter in a long time. So, all of Pac fans were like, Bite your nails off, tweaking, you know. I was a wreck all week. I'm going to be super mellow until next Sunday. But um, what a game. Uh, like I said, I just hope no one's hurt. But I, I'm glad Bob Yard didn't get hurt. I'm glad none of the defensive line that I know of got hurt. And uh, Jordan Love, he told me he's going to come out and throw three TDs, no exceptions, and we'd win 38 to 20. I would have been okay with that. So. <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's good to be a Packer fan. And all you Bears fans that might listen to this podcast, 
you got no genetic disposition to only like the Bears. You can switch teams. You can switch teams right now. So you can switch teams, and, and we will welcome you in to a fold of winners. <laughs> so, yeah. So, hey, go pet go. And uh, I'm sure you're getting a few other phone calls, Ryan. So there you go. Appreciate it, Nico, and I, I cannot wait to start tuning into some of these. I've got some people sending me stuff. If you guys have anything, please help me out. Set, I don't care if it's a podcast, a YouTube, a um, something on, on Twitter, uh, something that somebody said two months ago that was stupid. I, anything, anything in the world, send it to me. I need to create a massive database of things to go through and just enjoy and revel in, and uh, it'll help me make a much more glorious podcast as well. Um, where did that thing go? Oh, here. I just want to read this. This is via Ryan Wood. And there's going to be so many of these things. This will be more on the podcast for tomorrow. What Jordan Love did to the Bears on third and fourth down had to be demoralizing. And this is what I said about efficiency. This is why we won the game, and this is why we dominated the game. It was efficiency. He was 8 of 10, 141 yards, two touchdowns, and a perfect 158.3 passer rating on third and fourth down. There was an 8-yard touchdown to Romeo Dobbs on 3rd and goal, 30 yards to Jaden Reed on 3rd and 10, a uh, 35-yard touchdown to Aaron Jones on 4th and 3 in a debut. That was his that was his first time <laughs> stepping in. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely ridiculous. What what do we got for time here? We got a couple more. I forgot to mention this caller number 5. Forgot to mention this on the first first call, um, but we got essentially everything that I wanted this game. It was insane. We got an LVN sack on a crazy athletic play where he got Justin Fields down. Yep. We got a Devontae Wyatt, Wyatt making some plays. Yeah. We got Rashawn Gary being an absolute game changer on limited snaps. Yep. We got a pick six from Quay. Uh, in a game, by the way, where there was a lot of, uh, you know, chirping and pushing and shoving, mm-hmm. he didn't get a personal foul penalty. Um, what else? We got a, a like our defense completely shut them down until garbage time. I just this was perfect. It was perfect. Like this is exactly what you would ask for. Aaron Jones being explosive. Jordan Love looking good throwing three touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs being a crazy red th- zone threat. Jaden Reed getting involved in the pass game. He needs to work on catching, but it's fine. We got everything, man. <laughs> we got everything. This is an incredible week one. I'm so happy. All right. Anyway, thanks. Yeah, I mean, you know, and again, we had somebody call in and say that things weren't perfect, and I agree. I, I, I had a similar thought when I watched in terms of, like, things just seem maybe a little harder than it should be or whatever, but, I mean, I don't think it was you. Somebody else had said, you know, if, if somebody told me we were going to have be 38 to 20 would be the, the final score, would I be okay with it? I think I'd be okay with that. Anybody, if I would have said, listen, it's going to be a little rocky, but it'll be 38 to 20. What do you think? My first reaction would be how freaking rocky could it have been? <laughs> Which I still can't even reconcile because every time I look up at the scoreboard, I'm like, this this doesn't feel right. I don't, I don't know how we got 38 points. I still don't know how we got 38 points. It didn't feel that dominant, but apparently it was really dominant. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just be happy because there was... Across the board, and and uh, Packer super fan, I called into the other show, and it made the point. Don't forget special teams. Special teams was fantastic. Anders Car Anders Carlson was perfect on the day. We had Keyshawn Nixon and Jaden Reed with really good return numbers. In fact, let me just verify that because I still don't remember Keyshawn Nixon doing anything. Keyshawn Nixon two returns, fifty five yards, twenty seven point five average. Jaden Reed three returns, fifty four yards, eighteen yard average. Anders Carlson. Uh, one for uh, five for five on extra points and one for one on field goals, which was a 52 yard field goal. Um, and then Daniel Whelan, five punts, 249 yards, nearly a 50 yard average. His longest was 68 yards. Special teams was perfect. Defense, I thought, did a great job. I mean, the, the only thing that was a little frustrating, well, there, there's one player in particular that got under my skin, the second one that, that kind of bugged me. Um, but I mean, aside from like a blown coverage, it was really just, you know, I mean, there were a couple decent runs and then Justin Fields tr- trying to get him down, which is a problem for everybody. That's about it. I mean, the defense was fine. And then the offense. Yeah. I mean, Jordan 
A couple of the passes maybe could have been a little bit better. Um, the I mean, there was a, a botched snap to to uh, um, Clifford again because that has to be a thing. A couple drop passes. Um, you know, Luke Musgrave kind of being a little iffy with his getting down the field, kind of stumbling and fumbling around. It wasn't perfect, but man, it was it was about as close to perfect as you could ask for. And the fact that again it ended thirty eight to twenty, I, I just I just want to reiterate, just be happy. Let's do one more call real quick. Hey Ryan, what's going on? Packers one. Anyways, so I'm going to give my quick summary of the game. Anyways, I don't know how the Packers don't come out of this weekend as the number one team in the NFC North. Oh, 100%. Um, because, yes, the Lions did beat the Chiefs. But I wouldn't be surprised if they give it to the Lions because they beat the Super Bowl champions and the Packers beat some lowly garbage team with the number one pick. Now we're all going to throw the, the Bears under the bus. But the Lions barely beat the Chiefs. They scored 14 points against a terrible defense. Um, and also they just didn't look very good at all. And the Packers hung 38 points. So I don't know that the Packers are going to be given that, but I, I think there's going to be a lot of people. And, and and let's be honest, there are some people that already had the Packers prior to this game as the number one team. Florio and Sims had the Packers as number one. So I, I, I do think there's going to be an element of a hype train that does come around. Some people are still going to put the Lions there just based on like what was a better game for that really ignorant reason. But... Um, no, I, I agree. I think the Packers are far and away right now. I mean, based on that performance, this is one of the best teams in football. I mean, what, what do we have for scores here? Oh, we got Omar. Let's call. Let's talk to Omar. Omar, can you hear me? Omar, are you there, man? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's there that? he is. What's up? What's going on, man? Oh, man, I didn't know I was calling live on you. I was, ju- <laughs> I was just about done, man. I was just about to hang up, and you called. <laughs> okay, well, a quick, quick thing. I just wanted to say I wanted to congratulate the kicker because yeah. he played excellent, and I was surprised that like, he didn't mess up nothing. Yep. So I'm I'm happy about that. I'm happy for Jordan Love doing this thing, and I'm happy that they got me two hundred seventy five dollars off of forty five dollars. So that was a positive. That was a positive. I don't know how you could have a better than I've, I've I've never I don't remember the last time I was this happy after a game. You put two hundred fifty bucks in my pocket on top of it, and I'd be flying real high. Yes, <laughs> yes, it was. I, and the crazy thing about it is, I did this even before preseason. Like I was just that hype from training camp and stuff. And I was like, the Bears defense ain't that good. <laughs> like if he just plays average, you know what I'm saying? We should at least you know beat them by plus seven. So that's awesome, that was man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you calling in, bro. All right, man, y'all. Go back, go. All right, have a good night. I'm going to turn that off because we are done, done for the night after we get through the rest of Aaron's call. And I don't remember what we were talking about, but let's see what Aaron had to say. But they didn't play well, and the Chiefs oh, yeah. really lost to themselves more than they lost. Oh, yeah. I, I, sorry, now I remember. Dallas is handling the Giants 26 nothing. Okay, cool. Uh, Buffalo and the Jets we haven't seen. Detroit, I didn't wasn't really impressed. Kansas City will remain probably the best team, but that was not a great showing. Um, Atlanta beat Carolina twenty four ten. That's decent. Um, Cleveland looked real good against. And eh, there might be a couple teams that are that are going to be put on the radar here. But in reality, as I go through, how many of the, these games were as big of a beating? San Francisco probably was the best game. Um, Baltimore did a pretty good job, 25-9. to nine. That's a beating. Um, that was a five-point win. That's a two-point win. L.A. pounded Seattle. I didn't even see that. That's glorious. I'm actually happy that happened. I thought for sure Seattle would win. So th- there's a couple teams. I think some of them are not really believable. I think L.A., maybe you can buy into L.A. if you want to. I don't think that that's going to be a thing. Some of these teams we already knew were going to be pretty good, so that doesn't move the needle a ton. If you're talking about a team that got put on the map, Green Bay got put on the map. And some teams were already buyers, right? Some teams are already bought in. But now now the hype train shifts. It goes from bottom of the barrel to, okay, maybe this team could be one of the best in the North, maybe could be potentially a playoff team, to, okay, this is clearly one of the top teams in the NFC North and probably a playoff team. 
I think it probably shifts to that, which is crazy. Um, and again, just like before, I mean, this this whole preseason hype could have ended with a loss to the Bears, and this hype could end to, with a loss to the Falcons. But as of right now, I, I cannot wait to see how far this uh, this hype train is about to go. The Lions, and then the Vikings lost to Tampa, and they looked decent, but they didn't look great. And then the Packers just you saw the game. Um, that was awesome, and so I don't see how they don't become the favorites in the NFC North, and I think the team is going to rally around each other and grow even more and put forth so much more effort, and it's so great to finally see the team show what they've got. Um, so, great game. Uh, the Bears still suck. We still own them. Feels great. Um, so, have a good night. Bye-bye. Yeah, at the end of the day, what we learned is this is a good football team. We learned what everybody should have already known. This is a top five offensive line. This is one of the best running back rooms in the entire NFL. This is one of the better edge rush groups in the entire NFL. This is one of the best cornerback groups in the NFL. This is one of the better linebacker groups in the NFL. Um, with question marks at quarterback, but not negatives, question marks. That showed out pretty positively. Question marks at wide receiver. I think they did decent. Romeo Dobbs had two touchdowns on the day. I don't think you can really knock that. Jaden Reed looks solid, and Christian Watson didn't even play in this game. There's question marks at tight end. Luke Musgrave, I thought, did a pretty decent job, and, and we are still far away from tapping into his full potential. Again, he could have had nearly 100 yards and two touchdowns in this game. Um, There's questions along the defensive line, and we saw Brooks get his sack on his first game. We saw Wyatt seemingly take a pretty big step from last year. We have question marks at safety, or supposedly a negative, and although I wasn't super thrilled with Rudy Ford, I thought Savage balled out. I don't know about a play-to-play, but he looked better than expected. So, um, yes, this is a talented football team. How talented? I don't know. But all this talk about this is going to be the 1970s all over again for the Green Bay Packers was always stupid. And now it's up to us to just make sure that we tell everybody that said those things that they are, in fact, stupid. I'm going to get out of here, you guys. I got to uh, now I have to record the actual podcast. This will be podcast number three for me. But um, I'm happy to do this stuff with you guys. And it's always a good time. Have a good rest of your night. And I cannot wait to just have a lot of fun laughing at the enemy in the very near future. Have a good one. Bye-bye.